Puerto Rico. Drew a dive to the inside, misses that puddle of water right from the get-go and Mike Lewis pounds on in there. Growing up, I have always been a huge fan of motorsports. Back when I was little and used to live in Puerto Rico and moved to Florida, I grew up with race cars and knowing people who raced or work on the cars. Puerto Rico does have racing culture on the fast lane, which is drag racing. We always get to see rotary cars, most notably such as the Mazda RX-7s, the Datsun 510s. Fun fact, the Datsun 510s raced in Trans Am back in the 70s and 60s. And the Toyota and Mazda Starlet raced against each other. Even Australia has drag racing just like Puerto Rico, just like us. So why am I talking about racing in Puerto Rico? Great question, my fellow viewers, because I have been watching the Trans Am racing series since the spring of 2021 and also Can-Am, and it has been an amazing series to watch. However, there has been one race I was looking forward to watch the most, and it was a home race of mine, the 2003 Puerto Rico Grand Prix. The Trans Am series raced at the Isla Grande Airport in San Juan, Puerto Rico for the 11th and final race of the 2003 season. There were some storylines coming into this race. This was the Trans Am series inaugural race at Puerto Rico. Scott Pruitt won his third SCCA Trans Am championship with his number 7 Jaguar R Performance XKR after winning his 8th race of the season at Miami. Puerto Rican's Jorge Diaz Jr. was going for Rookie of the Year at his home race. Another Puerto Rican driver named Wally Castro made his third ever Trans Am Series start. He made his first start at the 1996 St. Petersburg race and was looking forward to winning at home. He also made another start in 2002, but I cannot find what race it was. So I believe Puerto Rico Grand Prix was the third start. The Puerto Rico Grand Prix was the first race that was held outside the U.S. for Trans Am since 1991 since they have been racing in the United States and Canada. How about the facility they were racing at. Isla Gran Airport, which is Spanish for Big Island Airport. The airport is located on Gaia Lindberg between the Puerto Rico Convention Center and Pan American Cruise Pier, just southeast of Old San Juan in the business district of Miramar. As a temporary racetrack, the facility was a 2.57 mile track with 11 turns. The race was a 55 lap race and the race length is 141 miles. 23 cars, well, 22 cars started the race. Joey Scarallo's Corvette machine did not start the race due to, well, I'm not really sure the reason why he did not start. All I said was DNS, which stands for did not start. Fun fact, Joey Scarallo competed at the 2002 Rolex 24 at Daytona for K&N Filters Racing in the GTS class. He also did 13 races during the 2007 Indy Lights series for Anderson Racing. Uh, the 2007 Indy Lights had a 16 race schedule, so he almost did the entire season. And he did two NASCAR Nature Series races at Road America and Watkins Glen for Jimmy Means Racing. Before I begin with this race, I want to let you all know that there are little to known footages, pictures, and information about this race. I did the best I can on this research and all those things, so I also did my best on finding pictures and uh, videos and clips and all that. So please bear with me here. Dicho esto, que comience la historia. Scott Pruitt led the field down to the green alongside with Bobby Sack to kick off the 50 barb lap race. Scott Pruitt, who already crowned his third championship, led the first 14 laps of the race. On lap 3, the caution came out. However, on lap 8, Edison Lutch's Corvette, really, another Corvette with issues early in the going. Come on! Ay, 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 hijo de puta. Anyway, let's get back to the story. On lap 15, Bobby Sack took the lead away from Scott Pruitt. He led 5 laps. On lap 22, Scott Pruitt took the lead back and he led six more laps. Caution came out again and things got busy on pit road for Wally Castro while other drivers stayed out. It was a gamble for the fellow Puerto Rican driver. Moments later, Scott Pruitt's chances of winning his ninth race of the season won out the window. It did not matter either way because Pruitt locked up the championship one race ago at Miami. Bobby Sack did lead some laps, more laps. However, Wally Castro took the lead away from Bobby Sack. Wally Castro will lead the last five laps and will win it at home at Puerto Rico. And we've come to the final lap of the 2003 championship, and it's local driver Wally Castro who wins in front of Bobby Sack and Tommy Dreesey. <laughs> Certainly to the delight of all of his local fans. Castro's margin of victory was an 8.332 seconds ahead of Bobby Sack. 
the race lasted 1 hour, 15 minutes, and 45 seconds. There were 6 caution flags for 14 laps. There were 3 different leaders and 5 lead changes. Scott Pruitt, who led 42 laps, Bobby Sack, who led 8 laps, and Wally Castro, who led 5 laps, were those 3 leaders. Only 7 cars DNF due to car related problems. 11 cars finished on lead lap, 15 cars finished the race. Jorge Diaz Jr. finished 12th and won Rookie of the Year. Another Puerto Rican driver named Axel Rivera finished 7th, and another Puerto Rican driver named Felix Sorales Jr. finished 6th. Fun fact, Felix Sorales did some Formula 3 races, and he did Indy Lights from 2015 and 2016. He won 3 races. After doing open wheel racing, he did some blank paint GT racing. After the 2003 race, Trans Am never returned to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was supposed to be the season finale of the 2004 season, but it was cancelled. Laguna Seca replaced Puerto Rico as the finale. Although Trans Am raced at my home one time, it was still amazing to find out about it and see the race. Although there was not a lot of videos, pictures, and information about the race, it was still challenging, but a fun research to do, and a story to cover and put together. If there was information I have missed or did not get right, feel free to tell me in the comments below. It is also very cool to do Trans Am racing content as well. I appreciate the correction and feedback. I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Stories. Comment, like, and subscribe for more episodes of Racing Stories. Also, do not forget to turn on my YouTube notification bell for more motorsports related content and, of course, for more Racing Stories. Muchas gracias a todo por apoyo a E Nation. Le presento a Ian Perez 48. Adios. Yeah, my Spanish is not as good as it used to be. Um, anyway, um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting Ian Nation. This is Ian Perez 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.